What's up guys, Kudokun here, and as we get back into the swing of Weiss Swartz, our first month is going to be based around Shakugan no Shana. The concept of the show is that there's another world parallel to ours based completely around fire, where demons come to this world to kill humans because human souls give them energy. A society of people meant to protect us will come by, sweep up the demons, and then everybody who was killed by the demons will get some of their life energy put into a new vessel called a torch. The torch concept is the most interesting part of the show, because essentially what it does is the flame inside of you burns out slowly, and as it burns out, people around you slowly start to forget about you, and when it's gone completely, everybody's memory is just wiped of you. This makes it so there's no mass panic when a demon comes by and slaughters a thousand or so people, and they just disappear completely out of nowhere. And it gives the people who were killed unfairly a chance to live out a little bit more of their life before they disappear. The show also features a villain who is sexually attracted to a Raggedy Ann doll. It also features two villains who are brother and sister and 12, who share energy between each other by French kissing. Okay, you can be as uncomfortable as you want to be, but if you tell me you're not at least a little curious to see what's going on with the show, you're a liar. So this is going to be a basic set review. We're going to look at four... Wait, we can't look at four of each color because there's only three colors for some reason. Okay. Uh, how about we look at six cards from each color that I find interesting. They don't have to be the most powerful cards, they just have to interest me. And if this video gets 100 likes or so, I might do a follow-up where I look at six more cards from each color. So let's get started. Let's start off with Yellow and Yuji, Mistis of the Midnight Lost Child. If you've never seen the show, that sounds like a weird name. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Yuji's dead, and his special ability is his torch keeps getting replenished every single day at midnight. That probably just confused you more, I'm sorry. Just go watch the show. So Shauna has this trend with its control powers where they're not really that powerful, but they're just so obnoxiously easy to pull off that it's hard to ignore them. Yuji is already a two soul attacker with 8500 power at level two, that when he swings in, if you play his climax, you can pay one to just GTFO a level two or lower. Again, it's not a super busted ability, but it's one stock and you play the climax, and you just open up a space for another character. The trend continues with Konoe Transfer Student with Suspicions. Again, this ability isn't super busted, you just pay two and you send one of your opponent's characters back to hand, but it's just such an easy way to open up your opponent's side of the board, and it costs nothing. If you're attacking with three characters, you can still use this ability and come up at plus one stock. There's also no limit on the character you can send back to your opponent's hands, so it doesn't matter what level they are, how much power they are, this is a really easy way to get rid of something that has super encore, or is just obnoxious. Something that the character Shauna herself is really well known for in Weiss is she's got really good change. In my opinion, this is probably her best, because it's a changer that has super encore. So, if you don't have a chance to change her when you first play her, then she can just stay alive and attack for free. Keep in mind, she doesn't cost any stock, she can just attack for free, and then you can just change her later. But let's talk about her change ability, because it has two very unique properties that you don't see very often, and they're both together on the same card. One, the character she changes into does not have to be in the discard pile or your hand, it just has to be in your deck, which can be good or can be bad, depending on how you look at it. It can be good because chances are you're going to have more of them in your deck more often than not, but... It can also be bad because if you know for a fact it's not in your deck, there's really no way you can fix it. But I mean, it's also thinning out your deck and giving you a chance to count how many climaxes are in your deck, so I, it's just such a toss-up. I think it's really good. The other unique property is the fact that you can use it right as soon as you play a climax. So as soon as this card hits the field, you can play its climax and have it turn into a level 2 9500 that swings for 2 soul. Just god dang, man. God dang, Shauna. Somebody at Bushy Road really loves the fire lolly. So we've got another UG. This one's an assist. It has a continuous effect where if you have at least two other flame characters, you can't be damaged by your opponent's auto effects, which is great. It can cancel out a lot of problems like characters that deal one damage with a climax combo or so, or anybody who likes Konosuba. Its second ability gives all of your level 2 or higher characters in front of you plus 1000 power, which to some people, you might look at that and say, oh, that's kind of useless because it's a level 1 character, wish it was just, you know, level 1 or higher. But it's important here because it works with the changers, and that's kind of what you're trying to do, is change into level 2, and when you do, you get a 1000 power boost. 
Yukari Hirai represents a set of characters in Shauna that do something very specific, and that is let you swap a card in your level zone with a card in your waiting room. Something else about Shauna that we haven't seen yet and I haven't had a chance to talk about is it's also got experience as a very core mechanic. So there are characters in Shauna that let you swap the card in your level slot with cards in your waiting room to make sure that you can hit your experience levels. This is my personal favorite because not only does this card go to memory so it's thinning out your deck, but it also happens immediately and you only have to pay one. There are some characters that have like, you can do it continuously or you can do it uh, pretty much for free but you have to wait until level two, but this lets you do it pretty much any time in the game. And I mean, let's be completely honest here. You're not going to sit here and just change cards out continuously. You're going to hit your experience levels and then that's going to be it. Now, if this let you choose cards in your deck, that would be where you would want to do it continuously because then you could take specific cards and put them in your level slot and then put them back in your deck, but you're just not going to do that here. Shauna, on top of everything else that I've talked about, also has some pretty decent events. This one here is Alistair. You can search your deck for two flame characters and put them in your hands, and then you discard a card from your hand and send this to memory. Oof. Oof. Let's go over this step by step. So you search your deck for two characters, and that thins out two cards from your deck. You put them in your hand, you discard a card from your hand, so you're going essentially plus zero because you're getting rid of two cards and you're gaining two cards, but you are getting two characters that you probably need. And then this goes to memory to permanently thin out your deck by another one. And it all costs one stock. That, my friends, is a decent event. Getting onto red, we discover something else about Shauna, and that is it has some pretty decent finishers. Usually the level 3 Shauna cards will have some kind of very powerful effect that you're supposed to start with and then build around. This one is my personal favorite, but I understand why people wouldn't like it as much. So it has on play heal, and yes, you can bring it in by a change effect. I told you chain Shauna is awesome. And its climax combo is when you reverse a character, you can pay 3 and clock yourself for 1 damage to attack again. I love Restanders, man. I love them to death. If you're one of those boring people who likes winning consistently, then this is a far more sensible card for you to use. It has experience level 5, and while you have it, you get plus 1500 power, which makes you a natural 11,000. And every time this card reverses a character, you can pay one stock to put it on top of your opponent's deck. This is a powerful ability not just because you can reverse characters and kick them to the top of the deck, but because if your opponent swings into you and you defeat the character they are attacking with, like if you're level 3 and they're attacking with a level 0 just to get some easy soul damage off, that character becomes damage for one stock. Oh, that was a cute move, kid. Uh, get on top of the deck, you're hitting the clock next turn. Next second effect is pretty basic, draw 2, discard 1. Level 2 Shauna is just as explosive. This is probably my favorite Climax combo in the entire set. When this attacks, if Crimson Colored Struggle is in your Climax zone, then you can take one of your characters and make it a Suicider with any level 3 or lower character. And again, it's not like a hyper broken ability, but it doesn't even cost any stock. So essentially what this means is if you're attacking with this, and you have a level 0 on board, then you can give this ability to the level 0, and it can swing into a level 3, or anything lower, and both of them are destroyed. Reversing a level 3 with a level 0 is just so, so soothing. So nice. Speaking of somebody who isn't Shauna for a second, we have Chanter of Elegy's Marjorie Daw. She's by level assist, and when she's put into play, you can pay 1 stock to deal 1 damage to your opponent. To be honest, I don't even know why I love this card so much, but there's just something so simplistic about it that I just love. You play it, you pay one stock, and you deal one damage to your opponent. That's literally it. Red's got two events I want to look at, the first one being Seal. The first thing this card does is send itself to the memory, so it's already sort of getting itself out of your deck, and it has a recollection. As long as this card is in your memory, your Shauna in the front row center slot gets plus 1000 power permanently. What can really be said about this? It's a pretty decent effect. Paying 1 for a 1 turn 1000 power boost is already something that we already kind of do, but paying 1 to get a permanent 1000 power boost to one of your Shaunas and also get one card out of your deck so that your deck is more consistent is just great. Your main beater is almost always going to be Shauna anyway, so I'd say the only downside to this card is having to have the character in the center slot, but 
Honestly, that's not even that big of a downside. Hypothetically, if you played four of these, you could have a negative four in your deck and also a plus 4,000 Shauna on board. I wouldn't say it's necessarily the best strategy in the set or anything, but I do think that this is a great card. Last red card we'll look at is Homemade Cooking Challenge, which is a very simple effect. You guys know I love these cheesy events that deal a bunch of damage to your opponent at once. That's exactly what this is, deal six damage to your opponent. It's only going to go off like once every 20 times you play it, but even if you just play this to get rid of one of your opponent's climaxes, it's still kind of worth it. If you're counting your opponent's climaxes and they've gone through like six, and you can play this and get rid of a seventh one to make at least two of your attacks go through, I think that's pretty worth it. You can also play it when your opponent is low on cards and near a deck refresh so that you can force them into a deck refresh before you start attacking. Blue is focused around the villains of the show. It doesn't have very powerful late game, but a lot of the early game is actually kind of cool. Hekare Moment of Confrontation has a climax combo where you can search your deck for a flame character and put it in your hand and then discard a card, and it also has a very unique form of encore. I've made fun of this encore in the past because you can put a flame character from your stage into your clock to keep this character alive. I've always made fun of it, but whenever I make fun of it, uh, somebody brings up a decent point about it, and that is, I don't like this effect, but I like the effect where you can clock yourself for one damage from the top of your deck. And looking back on it now, it does seem a little silly to like that one, but not like this one, because if you really think about it, this is a much more powerful effect. What makes this effect so good is you can do it with a character that's already been reversed. So if your opponent happens to reverse another one of your characters while well, this is also reversed, you can sacrifice the already reversed character to keep this one alive. This is good on offense and defense because if you want to attack in with a character like a level 0 or something and kill it off, then you can attack with it, get some easy soul damage, reverse it, and then during the Encore phase, sacrifice that character to keep this one alive. So even though I used to hate this effect, now I actually think it's pretty good. Judge of Paradoxes is a very simple effect. It has experience. If you're level 2 or higher, then you can side attack without any soul penalty. It's something that we don't see too, too often, so every time I see it, I get really excited about it, because I love cards like this, especially during the late game. If you and your opponent are level 3 and you're not near a deck refresh, you don't really have to worry about keeping your stock in place anymore, so you can easily just pay 1 and side attack without losing any soul. So then when your opponent attacks into you, you're not actually losing anything because it's not an open spot, so they're not getting the plus 1 damage. <laughs> Empty Existence Hakata is kind of a beast. During your opponent's turn, if they don't have 4 characters, this is a 4500 they have to deal with, which is a very high number. Granted, your opponent can just side attack and not lose anything at level 0, but this character can stay alive forever if your opponent can't keep a field of at least 4 characters alive. And if their field is big and scary, then you can just side attack and do the same thing to them. It's amazing. 2500 isn't even that weak for a character that has an effect like this. 3-eyed female monster, Belpiol. Uh, looking back, that's a really offensive name now that I think about it. Like, not offensive in a PC way, but just I didn't remember how mean they were to her. Basic level 0 assist, 500 characters in front, but you can also rest two of your flame characters to choose a card in your level zone and swap it with a card in your waiting room. Just like the other chick we looked at, this one is a bit more consistent because you can do it as many times as you want to and whenever you want to. Apart from just experience, there are other uses to this kind of effect. Like if you level up with something that's like a change target, then you can change it with a card in your waiting room to make sure you can change into it later and you can do this without worry of deck refreshing and putting it back into your deck and no longer having the target available. It also fixes your colors, which would actually mean something if the set had four colors. Because then if you leveled up with like a yellow card and you just had a bunch of red and yellow cards in your clock, then you could just swap that card that you leveled up with with a blue card and now you have all of your cards unlocked again. There are uses here, it's just not really worth running more than like one or two ways to swap cards in your level zone with cards in your waiting room. And this is the only other card I would willingly use to get this effect if I weren't just using the other girl. Oh look everybody, it's everyone's favorite preteen twincest! So Soroth and Tyriel are just really consistent. You can pay two and rest this to search your deck for a weapon character and put it in your hand. You can do it at any level you want to, there's no restrictions and you don't have to discard afterwards. Now keep in mind, that last point that I just made is the most important point as to why this is good. 
Uh, the Shauna cards are notorious for having to discard cards every time you put a card into your hand to keep your hand consistent and keep it at like a plus zero, but this is a plus one every single time you use it, and it just costs two stock. Like, yeah, the extra cost in the stock kind of sucks, but you just, you don't lose anything in your hand, and that's good. This is really useful if you need an engine for your super encores, because every turn you can just pay two to search your deck for a card, like a weapon character, and put it in your hand, and then you can use that card to keep a character with super encore alive forever. It's expensive, but if you're attacking with three characters every turn consistently, then it's not that bad of a strategy. And we finally move on to the last card in the set. Devouring City is an interesting one, because if you're newer to the game, you won't understand why this is good. But it's one cost starting at level 1 that makes it so your opponent can't stand a character, which means that character stays on the field but isn't an attacker. This essentially means your opponent has to go one turn without attacking with that character, and while also not gaining any damage off of it. This is especially devastating if your opponent has two cards in the back row. Normally what would happen is they would just move that card to the back and then play a different card to attack with and wait for that card to restand, but if your opponent has two characters in the back, then that character just has to stay on the field and they don't get to attack with it. Especially at level 3, this is a problem, because if they're only attacking with two characters, then that lessens the chance of them winning the game substantially. So what do I think of the set? I actually really enjoy the set. It has access to a lot of different tools. You've got experience, you've got change, you've got control, you've got beatdown, you've got really good events. But at the same time, I can definitely see why this set isn't played more competitively. As much as the set has access to, and as easy as it is to pull all of it off, it just doesn't have anything explosive enough to make it a top tier set. In my opinion, the deck plays a lot like a very simplified version of a Fate set, and honestly the Fate sets are just much better than this in terms of competitive play. In my opinion, of course. If you play competitive Shana, then just go off, have a ball, and you don't have to listen to anything I say, but in my personal opinion, if you were looking at this set based on its cards and abilities, then I think you would have a lot more success going into a Fate set. Now that being said, the deck is also really not very punishing, so I could see some newer players who are looking to play with more advanced sets, or maybe they've been playing a beatdown deck all their life and they just want to try something new, then honestly, you can get into Shauna and play some control, or play an experience-based deck, or play a change-based deck, and there's really not very much penalty to trying to get into it. You don't have to put that much thought into your plays, and it works really consistently. So yeah, that's it. Uh, if you're looking into it competitively, I don't think it's as competitively viable as some other sets, well, probably not as good as Fate, but if you're a newer player and you're looking for something powerful and consistent, then I couldn't recommend this enough. I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it. Stay tuned guys, there will be a review of the extra set that came out, and probably a couple of deck profiles coming out soon. Possibly a trial deck review, depending on the reception that we get. And if you want to see how the set plays, then there will be three Shauna decks featured in Card Games and Chill for the rest of the month. Hope to see you there! Hey you, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you left me a like. They help the channel grow and let me know that you want more of this kind of content in the future. The channel is currently being supported by these lovely folks on Patreon. You guys rock! If you have any thoughts on the video, of course leave them in the comment section below along with suggestions on what I should do next, but also answer this question to prove that you made it to the end of the video, if you feel like it. And finally, if you found this video by accident, then subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Kudo news. You can also hit the notification bell. Ringing the little bell will let you know when I upload a new video. See you next time!